Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to make a cool video um, about fretting and binding and um, making those little nubs on the ends of frets that everybody seems to like that um, a big company that you've all heard of uh, likes to use on their standard models. So anyway, um, this is a neck from a, a kit that we're working on and uh, a lot of people have asked us uh, to do some kits so we're doing a handful of little things. You know, we've always done custom stuff, but this one is a spec build. that's going to be a single cutaway, all mahogany uh, kit. All the woodwork and fret work's going to be done. You will sand it and finish it and, you know, put whatever pickups and bridge and stuff like that you want on it. But I thought it would be neat to um, put some binding on here. Actually, what happened was my fretboard's chipped, so... Um, uh, binding is a good way to fix little dings in the fretboard. You just cut all little dings off and backfill it with some plastic. So dig this though. Uh, something that we like to do is we like to leave a little, let me show you. We like to leave, leave a little piece of the fretboard wood showing. Um, then that way it just kind of looks cool. So, you know, there's our, there's our fretboard and then you put the, you put the binding on it there and push it all the way down and you can still see some of the fretboard I think that looks classy this is quarter inch binding and let me flip it around here as you can see there is enough left over to make the little nubs that go over the um, to ride over the frets so like when we get to this one boop, there'll be a little binding nub right there and I think that looks cool too um, it's kind of a pain to do, but you know, sometimes it's worth it to spend a few extra minutes and, uh, and just do it. So here is the neck blank. It has already been a radius and the fret, I'm sorry, the binding channels have already been cut. We've done videos on that before, so we don't have to, to do that. Um, I've got some binding here, but the first thing we need to do is install some of our fret wire and, um, Unlike when we have a, a neck that's bound and then we press the frets in, we do not have to pre-cut all the frets. We're just going to go ahead and press them in and then cut them close and go all the way down. So enough with the bullshit talk. Let's get started with that right now. Okay, guys, I got my fret press ready here. I've got my 12-inch fret press call in the, uh, the unit. Got my board is ready to go. It's already radius. I got my fret wire is already radiused. So, um, uh, and remember, unlike using the, uh, the we're, not gonna, we're not going to pre-cut this stuff. We're just gonna press it in and cut it as we go. So let me move the camera and we'll get it cracking. Okay, guys, our frets are all pressed in. Um, you know, pressing frets in with an arbor, uh, man, it's so much more consistent. And it's so much, I just think it's better than, than using a hammer. Now, sometimes you got to use a hammer. Um, I tap them in with, with, a, with a plastic hammer and then uh, seat them with the, the arbor press. Guys, if you're on the fence about uh, getting an arbor press, just do it. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so cool and it's so consistent and you will not regret it. Uh, even my favorite guitar influence, uh, building influence, uh, Dan Armstrong, he used to press frets in back in the day. So uh, check out the fret press. Uh, you don't have to buy one from Stu Mac. There's lots of places. I built mine, and you can build yours too. So anyway, our frets are all in, and now what we have to do is kind of clean up this these pokey outies. You don't want pokey outies. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to Trim them with a um, 
with a cutter as close as we can and then we're going to file them and uh, that is going to be easy. We might even use Mighty Little. Okay. All right, I think that's about as close as I can get it. These are just a pair of, uh, of snips that I, I ground down the, uh, the face so they would be flatter, flusher, so you can really get them in there. So uh, now we are going to file these fret ends down and get them to the same, uh, the same plane as the fretboard is. Uh, Chris just brought some lunch though, so we're going to do that first. I'm not going to film that. The next thing that you have to do, and the camera was actually off when I was doing it. I said a lot of really funny jokes too. <laughs> um, so you need to clean up the fret ends here. And uh, I use a couple different tools. I use Mighty Little, which is a file I use for lots and lots of stuff here. It's just a double cut file that I, I, uh, I trimmed the, the little tail off. And then this is a, a single cut file that's glued or epoxied to a piece of um, oak or ash. And uh, that's also good for doing this. So what you want to do is just kind of get started and, you know, uh, kind of break the, the high points off with, with a, a more aggressive file. <clears throat> and once you get it, once you get that stuff, um, it, get all the pointy bits rounded over, then you can switch to, to this file. Now, the, the bummer part about this is it's got four cutting edges. One, two, three, four. So you don't want to push the file too much uh, towards the, you know what I mean, toward the neck. You just want to just want to be mostly pressing down and get everything nice and, and even. Then you can switch to this file. I like this one because it's got a it's got a smooth surface here. So uh, yeah, you know, just um, just kind of work that stuff with a file, and it will be really good. So yeah, everything feels real nice. And if we put a piece of binding on it. That's kind of the telltale way to, to, to know if you've got any weird, again, pokey outies, right? So that looks pretty good. I've got both sides, and they're both looking nice. So while we've got the, um, there's no binding on here, let's take the opportunity, since we have it, and we'll flow a little super glue uh, under, these, uh, under these frets and um, kind of hold everything. We'll do it from this side and from this side. And that'll, that'll hedge our bets for these frets staying in place. All right, so I'm just going to drop this stuff in on the side. And it'll flow down there. And any super glue that's left over, we'll, uh, we'll clean up with our file before we bind it. Um, I do not recommend that you <coughs> use super glue to attach the binding. But, um, you know, you could make a case that... It would do it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could you could pretty much slap the binding on right now and call it good. Um, we're not going to do that, but you could. Okay. Now I know someone's going to ask. Well, why don't you recommend using super glue to attach binding? Um, I don't have a very good answer for you. Uh, I have used super glues to attach some bindings before, and it's worked well. And I've used it on uh, the ABS stuff, and um, I just don't like it. it. It's messy. There you go. It's messy. Although, you know, in this instance, it probably would work just fine, especially if you were using some of that, um, some of that binding from all parts that won't melt with, uh, with acetone. Then, yeah, maybe you could just plop that stuff right on here. It's neat binding. All right, now I'm going to use this little tool I made. It's just a piece of 150 sandpaper, uh, double stick tape to a piece of MDF. And we're just going to clean up any of the super glue that's sticking out. So our binding fits nice. I don't like to use a file for this because it, get, it gunks up my files, you know what I mean? Now we'll test fit some binding. 
And looks like I got a little bit of a high patch there. Kind of want to get rid of that. Looking good. Let's glue some binding down. All right, I got some binding pre-cut here, and it looks pretty darn nice on my um, my fretboard. Um, I've got everything's cleaned up, and uh, I want to make sure before I go too much further, one last time, that my frets aren't taller than my binding. And as you can see, they're not. And what's going to happen is we're going to remove all of this material from in here um, after the binding is glued down. But first, we got to get the binding glued down. So I'm going to use a little bit of this um, bind all, which I like, and some tape. Let me get this. Let me move the camera here. All right, this is going to go quick. And you know, the bind all isn't exactly um, the. Remember, I was I was talking about how super glue is a mess maker. The bind all is is a mess maker too for me, but um, I do like it for for this. For this application where the um, the binding is going on something flat, man, I really like it because it, it helps. It just sticks everything down. Look, at that, I made a big mess right there. Um, normally, I use the uh, the acetone technique, but um, boy, this this bind all for this is really good because it just kind of helps stick everything down and, and it, it, it holds it. You know what I mean? Okay. And you want to make sure, because the binding is taller than the fretboard, you want to make sure you're not letting it roll over. So really go ahead and push it down. Sock it down in there. Ready, right? And of course, make sure you're pushed all the way into the, the rabbit that you made. And you can see there's some little binding goobers coming up. So that means I'm doing my job, just like, uh, just like when you glue... Uh, you know, two pieces of wood together and you get that really satisfying um, squeeze out all the way around. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. See those little, little guys right there? That's actually binding that's melting and poking out. And everything looks good all the way around. I'm just going to tug this in one last time. And then we're going to forget it. All right. One day I will I will figure out just when to stop the bind. Oh, that wasn't wasn't bad. Wasn't too bad. I want to make sure I'm overhanging my nut slot and overhanging the uh, the back. The tape likes to stick to the tape. So if you if you put the tape from one end over to the other side and stick it to the tape. That's a good thing. You don't have to. Do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> so now what we'll do is we'll let this bind all stuff set up and uh, probably come back tomorrow and I'll show you how to trim out the little niblets. Okay? 